these are a few of my favorite plants. <laughs> so, Leticia, I said Varia Leticia, uh, that red one there, and also this other one here. This is also a said Varia Leticia. That was my original plant, and I took cuttings from that, and now have grown this one. So, that's probably about two and a half years old, and this one would be about over a year old. And I love it so much that I went and bought another plant. And so now I'm growing them and propagating them. And the colors doesn't look like this throughout the year. It's only during autumn and winter when they show uh, their true beauty. Because I think the cold um, activates the color. So it's only when it's cold when they show their color like that. Autumn would have to be the best time of the year uh, for bringing out the colors in succulents. That's when the colors are at its most uh, intense. We still have some sun over there, so that's going to be difficult to see all these beautiful babies in here. So we've had minus three this morning and a couple of the succulents. Uh, got a bit of frostbite This Crassula pellucida That was frostbitten this morning. You can see it's trying to recover But that baby is already sort of dead, but it's okay because there's still plenty healthy leaves underneath that So this is where I'm gonna be putting that one now And also this is a sedum clavatum um Sedum clavatum is not really all that frost hardy. They do need a little bit of um, protection from the frost. See this one here is a two year old plant. This is now actually have seen two winters. This one. So it got knocked about a little bit last year from last year's frost but it recovered nicely and it's looking beautiful so look at that it's just gorgeous so beautiful so it's a beautiful healthy plant now so watering uh with this ones with most of my succulents i only water them when they need watering so either i pick up the pot or i squeeze the back of the leaves or the the furthest from the back so say for example this is Agraptopetalum superbum. I actually call it Graptopetalum superbum. So these ones are the same. If they need watering, it tells me. So if I touch it and it feels sort of soft, or you can actually see it if it needs watering. Uh, this one is a Chaviria Blade Runner, and that one is nice and firm still, so that means it doesn't need watering. This is Sedevaria Starburst. This one I put in a small pot so you can see the soil so um, I do water it because the soil is limited that has grown into what it is now um, if you grow it into uh, a pot or an area wherein it's receiving a lot of soil this is what it looks like So that plant that you see there is Sedevaria starburst in a bigger pot and also semi-protected area. The other one over there that I just shown you is out in the open, unprotected from the element and in a small pot. When it comes to watering, I water them the same amount I mean I water it as much as I can or as, as much as it can take and that one just more compact and has got more color and this one here and up above is the Chivilia afterglow which had suffered a little bit of frost damage and now you see it has recovered and tonight it's forecast minus one Celsius so I'm just gonna leave that there for now I will however move that um, in the next few days because it can't stay there during winter this orthornacopensis 
the ruby necklace look how nice and plump and delicious looking they are so even this one on the other side here look at that it's like grapes they're quite fat look really big um, uh, plants now or oh, the leaves has gone really really chubby the Hawarthias these are Hawarthias out in the sun they go all red and the soil that I use for this one is the same one uh, as my master soil mix my succulent master soil mix now this one is sedum are you burrito? yes sedum burrito and I am leaving that in here to see how well it handled the frost. I have another plant here. I think this is Kanihini. And I think, oh look at that, really nice um, and firm. So I think this one should be able to handle the frost much better. So I'm leaving it there to test. And so far, you survived minus three with uh showing no signs of damage this will have to be my most favorite spot in my backyard garden because this is where i keep all the pretty uh, plants in the pretty pots supposedly so that one is still a pretty pot it's terracotta but it's got a pretty pretty echeveria a mestro in it these two beauties here so that's a mummy sativaria leticia and this is a baby sativaria leticia and along with Belladonna, Rahoya, Echeveria Rahoya, and Echeveria Melaco. So now I can see the color of the Melaco. So this is only about um, 14 or a month, uh, I mean a year and a half. So I only started with this plant over, well, 16 months ago and now i already have a lot of babies from it and also this uh it's form a uh, thick shrubby lots of plants type of thing anyway <laughs> so you know what i mean and this one is i'm getting distracted it's a very uh, red top well actually to be honest i did not have a label for this one when i got this but most of the time it's already this color so the color stays like that say 10 months a year it sort of turns a little bit green for a couple of months of the year but the rest of the time it's just this color it's just beautiful so that's a different color from that rohoya and also a mestro but then the same red tone and watering wise i watered them as much as i can as much as they needed so the minute i feel that the leaves are getting soft i give them some water and this one uh, if I put them in a pot like this, uh, when you water overhead as well, I mostly water overhead with a hose. So I water them from the top and the pots, the pots that are like this, they can't really get water into the roots. Oh, my little birdie bird is making a noise over there. And so what I do with this, I'll take the whole pot and soak it um, in uh, water with sea salt overnight and then drain it and put it back on its place so this is how i water most of them so most of them are overhead watering with the hose and the ones that i can't get to of course as i've explained is i dunk them and soak them this one is no soaking because this is quite heavy and it's quite a big pot so this one receives overhead watering this is a chavria colorata f a linsayana uh, that's a mouthful this is a chavria setora that's what the name when i purchase it but uh, i'm just doing some research and apparently it could be a set oliva so to me right now this is a tora this one is a chaviria gavoidis victorera victorera has different forms it comes in different colors so if i'm gonna spin around slowly over here on the other side now this one is an chaviria Agavoidis Victorera as well and look at the color the intensity of the color is just beautiful and also I'm gonna take you to the other one here oh 
This one is also a Chaviria Victorata, which is not getting a lot of sun. So the plant is quite big. They can grow quite big, but they're very frost hardy. And uh, you can water them as much as you can. If you want to uh, grow them big, then you give them lots of water. And if you want to have small compact plants, then you give them less water. But then the minute it feels limp or soft, the leaves then you start or I start watering them now this one is Echevria colorata Mexican giant and with lots of babies so this one is um, uh, uh, about three years old now this plant so this is my oldest um, Mexican giant and look at all the babies lots of babies I've actually pulled off a couple as well to propagate so they're very frost hardy and they're not fussy plants. They don't get attacked by mealybugs. So all of these plants in here, mealybugs uh, don't seem to like them. They would try and lick it like say, there's probably a little bit of white on the surface there. But uh, that's um, telling me that once a mealybug actually stop and check it out to check it out, but it did not bother uh, embedding itself into the plant. So this plant, this is, I think it's a very uh, green rose and Echeveria Shichi Kuxi, that one there. And that one is one beautiful plant. The reason why it's green there because it's not getting enough sunlight, but it doesn't matter. I'm just propagating it more. I have to pull that out soon. And speaking of Shichikuxi, this green Shichikuxi can look quite beautiful. I'll take you here. This is a three year old Shichikuxi. I'm not sure if it's the same plant as the raspberry ice that people are telling me. A friend of mine says that uh, it's not Shichikuxi. Well, the label says Shichikuxi, so I'm sticking to the label Shichikuxi. It's a bit of a tongue twister, but anyway, beautiful, beautiful plant and very frost hardy. And I don't have any pest issues with it as well. And then water it when I water it when I remember. And if I don't remember to water it, I can see some dry leaves on the edges starting to show. Then that sort of uh, tells me as well that it needs some water. And then I water it. This is a three-year-old Echeveria Glow Sport, one of my most favorite plant because of the color and also the structure and also the firmness, the, the texture. It's just sort of um, rough a little bit to touch the surface of the petals or the leaves, but um, otherwise it is a beautiful plant and uh, it has become frost hardy and heat resistant. So now I'm gonna say that all these plants are now exposed to the sun and the frost and hail and shine and Lucky this year we had some hailstorm, but it missed our area. So I'm very grateful for that and now these are my I Have to shut off that bird. So I'm gonna show you now the minute it gets cold This little birdie, I have to turn this off. Oh my goodness. Okay, there. Okay, sorry. Now, I'm going to go back to my plants. Oh, by the way, this one's now. This is Peperomia graviolens. And this is a sort of a semi-crested. Can you see the cresting? I love crested plants. See the stem there on the right-hand side? And um, I've, well, uh, it is now, I think this one, I'm going to leave this here. The mother plant I have brought inside. And this one is now my propagation from the mother plant and which is going to stay here. I got a couple uh, cuttings. I get one other cutting from this one that's going to stay inside which I think is still in the backyard because I kept forgetting to bring it in. But anyway, this is going to stay here throughout uh, the whole winter. So summer-wise, uh, it gets afternoon sun 
and I give it plenty of water when it's dry I just soak the whole pot in some water overnight drain it and put it back here so this one I think is already dry again hang on yep that's already very very light so when it gets light like that I normally water it but tonight I'm not gonna water it because we're gonna have minus one so tomorrow I'm gonna water it because the following day I think uh, today's Monday tomorrow's Tuesday so Tuesday morning is actually uh, yeah Tuesday morning will be minus one Celsius so no water so no watering is gonna happen on all my plants when there's gonna be forecast frost otherwise um, I watered them when they needed watering so this is um, Ionium smithia look how beautiful the spots on the back of the leaves it's just beautiful so when it matures it gets all these dark spots look at that and this is a Chiviria gold money eye so are you they're supposed to be frost hardy because I had this growing outside in my 50 zone last year and this year I've just put it in this pretty pot so and move it here so hopefully it will survive um, and I actually potted it up a few weeks ago which I shouldn't have because they're normally they're dormant most of the videos right now are going into dormancy period they go to sleep and the other plants sort of wake up when it gets cold like your Ionium but they don't like the frost so they the roots would grow when it's cold just like this Crassula volkensii but they don't like um, frost settling on them there you go so this one this Portula camulocinensis this plant is now almost two years old I think one year and eight months and I bought two plants one I left in this small well I put it in the small pot and then the other one I put uh, in a bigger pot and you should I'll show you the difference